Hello designers, this is Rebecca and this is your assignment three in the studio critique. So let's go ahead and take a look at this assignment submission page requirements before we get rolling, okay? So um, for the overview, you were to create designs for two types of music media from your genres era. So using the research that you've collected and ideas and info from your brainstorming, your mind maps, your personas, your mood board and graphic standard sheet, along with the specific specs included in the assigned reading, You'll create designs for the packaging and labeling of a 12 inch vinyl LP and either an eight track, a seven inch vinyl single, a cassette or a CD. You'll present your creations as a multi page PDF that includes the print ready files and mockups. You'll create your graphic headings and any vector graphics in Illustrator and you'll manipulate photos in Photoshop. You'll create the mockups in Photoshop and you'll lay out your final designs in InDesign including the bulk of your copy, meaning lyrics, production info, etc. Your assignments must be uploaded by the due date. So here's the assignment requirement checklist. Um, I give you a slideshow presentation um, little template for you to use. You don't have to use the template. You can just use it as um, basically a table of contents on how to organize your own slideshow, but you can also use it as just a blank template for your presentation as well, either way. This includes a design for the cover, your packaging of the 12 inch record, the lyrics on either the paper sleeve or a separate insert, and labels for both the A and B sides of the vinyl album. It includes a design for one of the other music mediums and includes a design for the packaging, a clever solution for displaying lyrics, and the label for, your, for the production, sorry, for the product itself. It must include an image of the front and back cover art for both mediums without template lines and bleeds, only the design within the trim lines. You need to include an image of lyrics for both mediums without template lines and bleeds, only the design within the trim lines. You must include an image of the labels without template lines and bleeds, only the design within the trim lines. You must include an image of each mock-up on separate pages and it includes each medium for the printer that does include template trim area bleeds and registration marks and includes a mock-up of each medium. Uh, designs for each will incorporate the record studio logo and production information and include the band name, album name, song titles, and lyrics. The eight track, if you decide to go that route, does not need to include lyrics. All right, let's go ahead and get started. First up is Marion and Marianne's genre is grunge. And this looks super grungy, it looks fantastic. I love the halftone pattern mixed with this like diagonal line kind of halftone pattern. It's just amazing. As well as um, your use of this color palette is really cool. It's all really wonderful. So it has sort of like a, a psychedelic influence as well, but it's overly grungy because of your black and white um, black and white and half tone effects there. So it's really great, really nice there. And it's fun to see you um, incorporated some color vinyl or like a, uh, an image on the vinyl is uh, beyond just the label. Plus your CD has a cover across the whole CD. It looks really neat, really nice. So these are your mockups for both the um, 12 inch album cover, including the lyric sheet, and like three different versions of vinyl there. It's really fun, like different color or uh, collector's editions, maybe. It's really a really neat idea. And then your CD down there, it's beautiful. Okay, so let's go ahead and check out the design. So this is the front and back with bleeds and trim lines. So I don't see, I mean, I see the your red line is your trim line and the green line is your bleed line, um, but I don't see like the printer registration marks and all those things that you would see if you were to export it from Illustrator using the PDF presets uh, or export it from um, InDesign using the same ones. But what I'm happy to see is you have a design along your spine here that includes the name of the album, your uh, artist and the, um, the record company. And then this looks really great back here, super professional, especially with this sort of like copyright information here and your barcode and the, uh, the record album logo really worked it in nicely there. I love this really fun font down here, like your font, your effects that you applied to it. And I see your logo and you even included a parental advisory sticker, which is really great. I like this, these, uh, this font over this, um, sort of, you know, black marker scribbled in 
uh, little screens behind the font to help them th with readability. Looks great, wonderful. So this is the uh, cover trimmed, looks really nice. And then now this is your inside two panels because we're doing a bifold cover and these photos look great, really nice effects to make them all look really consistent. And um, you know, these two are a little bit more grungy and uh, I can see that you used um, the, maybe a mix of the Xerox and another filter, uh, effects filter on there. But this guy down here is like very clean. His lines are really sharp, whereas we can see um, some more kind of uh, um, almost the black is like bleeding. You know what I mean? It's just these are super high contrast where he has more gray in his jacket. His face is super crisp. It's not, you know, a lot of it lost in dark shadows like on her. And so I think that you could he might be a higher resolution image. And sometimes when you have higher resolution, the effects um, just look a little bit different on than on images that are lower resolution. So you could save him at a lower resolution JPEG and you could also uh, really play with your levels uh, or your curves to make him more dramatically dark in areas, you know, um, and get rid of the gray so that he'll his effect if you redo the effect uh it'll look more like these other two images these two look really similar to each other so great and then this looks fantastic too this one goes along with these two over here really nicely i like these little scribbles and stuff that you added in and all this these handwritten elements are really nice really fun like um having their uh their signatures on the inside panel is on the inside yeah, on the inside panels is a nice touch as well. It's fun for the fans to see. Great, so here's your trim, one with the trims, and here's your trimmed uh, version. And then here's your lyrics, and this looks really nice. Good layout, I think it's really nice with the columns. Looks fantastic, I also like the, the uh, light text on black versus the black text on a light background, looks great and how you framed it up real nicely with these hand-drawn lines is beautiful. It all goes really, the hand-drawn lines really complement the um, handwritten script look very nicely, and I like your large numbers. It's beautiful uh, information hierarchy here, and just organized really nicely. I love how the titles are rotated and uh, going down below the numbers. It looks awesome, really nice. And here's the trim version, looks really great. And then here are your album cover labels. And so you have the one that's just uh, white on black, very simple. And then you have the one that has the um, really busy background that looks awesome with then using that marker scribble again behind the, the white font, white text to make it nice and readable. So that looks good. So what I would have liked to see on these is you also needed your um, record company, uh, recording company, um, logo on here as well. And something else that really helps these record album labels to um, look super legit is some tiny itty bitty little text that kind of wraps around it. It doesn't have to go all the way around. It could go halfway around or something, but there's just all this kind of copyright stuff that you already have on your record cover on the back of it um, that you could incorporate there at like super tiny text, like a, a six or a five, you know, really itty bitty. And uh, yeah, but I'm happy to see. Oh, and we don't have the album, um, the band name on here either. And usually you have the the band, um, the album name as well. Okay, so here's your CD. It looks lovely. I love these effects. So yeah, you so you incorporated incorporated that copyright information on the CD, and that looks fantastic. So we also would need the. Um, the name of the album, the name of the band, and the uh, record company on there too. And I also recommend putting on the album, I'm sorry, the song titles. Um, but I have seen CDs that are just really visual like this that don't have much information. Uh, it's just helpful that, you know, when you misplace the case or whatever, you know who it is and stuff when you find the CD later, but you know, okay. And then this is your outside cover and it looks fantastic. So 
just kind of going on with the same uh, 12, same design as a 12 inch, but it's, you know, re, re formatted for this, these dimensions and it looks really good. Really good, yeah. Great. Looks great, Dan. Yeah. Okay, so um, usually with the, never mind. I was gonna say, usually with the CD cover, um, we don't have a spine like the, well, yes we do, I'm sorry. I'm trying to think about, it might wrap or, well, if this is the, if this is the template that you got for a CD, then that's fine with me. Okay, and then here's your uh, lyrics insert again. Great, great, great. All right, thank you so much. Next up is Juliet. Juliet's genre is also grunge. So let's check out here in the studio. Great. So, um, oh, this looks really nice. Really nice. I love this uh, tape on there. It looks fantastic. It looks so three-dimensional. I just really love it a lot. And it looks, uh, the contrast with that red and black background is super nice. Really cool. I also like how, you know, these this arrow is kind of parallel to this um, tower in the background in the image there. It looks really beautiful. Really great. And then this is fun over here. Nice way to show the um, the record company label. And this looks beautiful down here. Really nice. We just need a barcode. But uh, I love the layout of the song lyrics. And I love this font that you used for the song lyrics in your album title. It's beautiful. Yeah. And I think this is nice keeping the um, band name, the band logo uh, in black. Uh, because if we were to make it white or this bluish color, you know, it would just kind of create this like box going around. So I think it's nice to draw attention to the the new the album name um, a little bit more. So that's great. Nice decision. Awesome. So here is the design trimmed. And here is the design with all the bleeds and the trim lines as the t on the template. So this is nice. So um, for those of you who are watching, when you have a template like this, uh, you do want to drag your um, design all the way to the edge of these flaps like Juliet did. That's a really good job there. And so, and I love seeing your uh, design drag to these bleed lines on this edge too. Really good, really good stuff. And I'm happy to see that spine also has a uh, your album name and band name and record company. So great work there. Great. And then here's the album cover design for the inside spread. And this is trimmed and this is really great. I love this collaged um, band picture on this continuous red and black background and this cool note here taped in, just bringing that whole theme throughout the whole um, album is perfect, it's really great. And then this is the inside. So uh, usually the inside isn't gonna be the same template uh, it's not going to have these glue flap areas, but that's okay. So um, I think you could have just gotten away with it being, you know, this bleed line all the way across, but that's okay. That's fine. All right. Next one is the lyrics. And this is a really nice layout here. The columns, you've got plenty of room here. Um, so because you have so much room, you have like really huge gutters. I would go ahead and make these, uh, the names of the songs even larger and uh, a different color. So if you don't want to go larger, at least make them a different color. You've had, you know, to um, really push that information hierarchy. All right. And if you wanted to, you could also add the track number on there. Like you have them all numbered on the back of your record uh, if you wanted to. Okay. But um, I love the columns and all the spacing. I think it's great. And this is the one with the trims. So I don't see the um, I don't see the registration marks and um, sorry. Okay, I don't come on. I don't see the color registration bars and all those things on there. But um, yeah, all right. And then for the labels, these are fantastic, really good. Okay, so I see that you added your record company label to side B, and that works. I think that's fine. You've got this copyright information at the bottom that looks really good. It helps it look super legit. And then the, um, I like how you, where you placed your vanishing horizons right along the middle there to almost create a horizon line, you know? And uh, the way you laid out the, the song titles looks really good. 
I don't see like a side A and a side B. Let me zoom in here and see if I can see that. Zoom in. Yeah, so it, I think it is good to say side A and side B, but mm, I guess you don't need to because you used your numbers, um, you know, one through six on the first side and seven through 12 on the other side. So no need to change that, that's fine. Great, now here's the album labels. Oh, nice and big, so I didn't have to zoom in. <laughs> All right, and here they are with their trim lines. Great. Okay, and here's your compact disc mock-up. It looks fantastic. It's even in the plastic. I love it. Cool. So I like how you use the tape on this version on the front there. Great. You even have your, well, you have your spine information on here. So the spine information will go down the side uh, that we can't see on this mock-up here. So go ahead and just get rid of these on, on this mock-up, okay? Um, this looks really nice. Great, this is perfect. And this looks fantastic too. I like that little personal note that you added. It's really great. Yeah, so it just seems like, um, it seems like this isn't the right um, template for this, but I guess it is. It says it is over there, doesn't it? Hmm. Okay, well, on your mock-up, just get rid of that text there so that it looks like it's supposed to instead of, uh, so, you know, we don't, we're not thrown off by the information twice on the cover. Okay, and this looks really good. So this looks like it's a little bit different than your layout on the record. I'm not sure if it's the same text. And I'm also not sure if you had these in sentence case. Yeah, so I just jumped back and these are in all caps here and might be a different uh, font. So I would just go ahead and, you know, make them consistent, okay? And whatever changes that you make to the uh, album cover lyrics, if you do change the color of your song titles or the size of that text, go ahead and do that, those changes here as well, okay? Great. And same with on this these pages. This is fun. I love that. Great. All right, excellent. This looks really great. Oh, hold on. Uh, this one, um, I think that there's a trim line in here. So just double check on that template because if there is a trim line, you're gonna lose this text here, okay? So you might need to bring that in a bit. Same with your um, record company label, might be a little too close to that trim line. So you might have to nudge that down a bit as well. All right, all right, thank you, Juliet. Next up is Anthony. Anthony's genre is 80s hip hop. Let's see what we have. All right, so this is your 12 inch mock-up. Looks really nice. Nice and simple. I love um, the, like this handwritten block letter. It's really cool with that stroke on it. And I love the color palette and your logo looks great up there. Um, this looks fantastic. Really good, nice imagery. Everything's great. So um, on this picture of LL Cool J here, I think that you did like, um, I, I'm assuming, but if I'm wrong, please, you know, I'm sorry. <laughs> I think in Photoshop, you went in and you did a subject select um, because the edges are a little hairy here, like a little, you know, just pixelated. And then in here, he has a red light behind him that didn't get cut out. So, and then also right here behind his hand. So I do recommend going back into, and maybe even down here under his arm, uh, go back into, or, sorry, excuse me, Photoshop, and what I like to do is just use my, either my um, pen tool, if you're comfortable with using the pen tool, which you should be at this point, it's exactly like Illustrator. Uh, so you can use your pen tool and you can trace around him. You can even just do it in sort of chunks, okay? Uh, it doesn't need to be like this perfect thing all the way around him. So if you want to just trace along the edge wherever it's real pixely and zoom in tight and then close up the shape and then you go into I just decided to bring it into Photoshop so you can see what I'm talking about instead of trying to explain it. So if I use the pen tool and I can just uh, make a path, I will zoom way in. So I did a screenshot of your record, so mine's gonna be like super pixelated, but um, you would just use that image of LL Cool J that you already started. So I would use my pen tool just like I do in Illustrator and go around the edge here. If it starts getting weird on you, just um, you can change your uh, fill to none, okay? 
you can go to the paths tab. You can go to the paths panel. If you can't see the paths panel, just go to window and select paths. Okay. Um, from there, you can change it down here in the bottom right corner to uh, load the path as a selection. So if you click this little dotted circle icon, then notice that you get the marching ants there, and then you can just hit your delete key. Oop, we have to go ahead and turn off our unlock our, I'll make sure we choose the layer that he's actually on and not the shape that we created. But now when I hit delete, then that goes away. And I can also delete that shape that was created. So now you can see he's getting better at being cut out. So there's that option. Um, and you can just use your pen all the way around. The other option I use is the uh, polygonal lasso. This is really easy for the most part, but um, it's gonna give you a little bit more of a jagged selection. So I will just, oops, let me start over again. Beep, beep. So if you don't use this tool much um, and you're clicking around and it starts getting a little bit out of control and you're like, how do I get out of this? And you try to click another thing and it's, ah, just, just double click and it'll close the shape and then you can hit command or control D to deselect. All right, so I'm gonna use my polygonal lasso tool to just cut out this little shape here. And then this, by using this tool, it doesn't bring up the paths, I'm sorry, it doesn't bring up the, the shape icon. It's a little hard to see here with this low res. Ooh, I'm getting way in there. Look at all those pixels. I'm not sure if I'm getting this cheek here because I have this um, yellow, look where my mouse is thing turned on. But as you can see, I think I'm getting it. And then just go all the way down and around uh, under his thumb there and just keep going. So this is going to give you a more rough, jagged cut, but that's okay for your genre, you know. And I'm not sure if he's wearing a ring. He probably is because he's Uncle L. Okay, so there we go. And then it automatically creates a path so we don't have to go into paths and change it to um, change this shape to a selection. It automatically makes the marching ants. So then I can just hit delete and on and on. So you would just cut him out. And but like up here, this part is like pretty, uh, you know, messy. And it's not you being messy, it's that um, Photoshop just selected part of the background there, you know? It's a hard picture with a red light behind him and he's wearing a red sweater, you know? Same with here, you're just gonna cut that out and on and on. And hopefully your image is higher resolution than the one I'm using. And see, see how this is um, on the real one, this little section under his arm there by his side, if that is in fact, um, a background or if it's just a shadow on his jacket, okay? All right, I hope that helps. The other thing I like to do if you're using that masking one is the, um, let me select my object, which is what you may have done, select subject. And then from there, go to select and mask. And then from there, go to uh, object aware and pull up your radius here for the edge detection to about two, and then turn click that smart radius button. And you can then go through with this um, refine edge brush tool, and you can go turn mine down, way down, there we go. And I can kind of just like click around the edge there and tell it where to mask. And that gives you some pretty good, um, pretty good selection like you can see that it's just like picking the edge of his uh, hat but see down here it really thinks that's part of his jacket uh, but I find that that helps a lot than just leaving it the regular selection you know the regular selection doesn't always work that great okay <laughs> great back to your presentation okay so that's the only thing that really stood out to me was just you know the the rough edges and some of the stuff not getting cut out in his um, cutout. <laughs> uh, and then over here we have um, the, I like seeing the parental advisory uh, thing on there, but we also need a barcode and we also need your, um, the uh, record company logo on there somewhere. So you can bring your parental advisory sticker size way down. That's really big. It's usually only like an inch or so um, on a record or CD. So uh, yeah, just keep that in mind. There's room to, to make that smaller. Yay, I'm happy to see the trim lines and the um, 
the images extended to the bleed lines, these color bar registration and these registration marks. Great. Yay. I'm so happy to see that. I can't even tell you. What I don't see is the spine of your record. So you do need a spine here that's going to say what um, the album name is, the artist name, and the record company. And one last thing, the front of the record is going to be on the right-hand side, and the back of the record is going to be on the left-hand panel, all right? So you do have to swap those. Now, for this part, uh, this is a great beginning to these lyrics being laid out. Um, the only thing is that this is just for two songs. And so instead, you know, we want to have 12 songs on here, right? So uh, you could have six songs on this side and six songs on this side. This is a very large piece of paper. It's 12 inches by 12 inches. That's huge. So you have lots of room to make more columns to make this text even smaller. Um, I like the names of the songs in this fun font as well, but that those can also be smaller, you know? Uh, so yeah, I'd like to see all 12 songs written out, but I do have to say, these are great lyrics. So if you want to, you don't have to make lyrics for all of them. You can use um, placeholder text. Uh, I'm okay if you use some chat GPT to uh, generate some of the song lyrics for the other songs. I just want to see all 12 laid out to show that you know how to um, handle that much copy, you know, and how to format it all really nicely. All right. Use this opportunity to get like real creative with laying out not, you know, many columns of text. And then you did something a little different here with this CD mock-up. You gave us like a collector's box, which is pretty fun instead of just a regular CD case. So I'm, I'm cool with that. I like that. Uh, so let's, this is your mock-up here. And I like seeing this down the side. That looks really cool. Let's look at, this is the front of the box. And that works. I think you can make this a little smaller, um, about an inch. I'm trying to think of how wide this would be. Yeah, I think it'd go a little smaller. And then this is the disc. Okay, so it's just not trimmed. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> Great. I love seeing that Brooklyn Bridge there. And then same thing with here. Whatever you do with your lyrics on that album cover, do it here, okay? And then um, just to let you know, this is gonna, depending on how you fold this, no, never mind. I'm trying to think of how this is gonna open up, you know, and if it will be folded, um, if it'll be double-sided, that kind of thing. So. Um, if you need more room, you could make this four panels and it could be like a little booklet that you open up, but it's only um, one page folded in half, just turned into four panels, if that makes sense. Okay, and I'm happy to see these uh, registration and crop marks, really nice. All right, great. So what I don't see is like this part of the box, um, the back of the box. So I would like to see those designs as well. And you already have that laid out on your record. So I would just mimic that um, for the back of the box. And uh, maybe the top panel should be seen and the side panel. Okay, just showing it all as a, like a flat layout. Um, and then for the Beats Unleashed, you need to have his name on there too. So DJ Breakbeat needs to be on there. Um, and I do recommend having the record company on there too. Um, for uh, a lot of people are also putting the song names on here. So you may need to put your song names on in a different font um, because this font's going to be hard to read very tiny. Okay. But um, yeah, so I can't wait to see um, those updates in the final presentation. Thank you. Next up is Gia and Gia's uh, genre is funk and 70s funk to be exact. And this looks so cool. I love it. I love this. Your logo turned out really cool. I love the red on the um, astronaut's helmet um, with that contrast of like all the white and gray. It's really beautiful. And this star background is gorgeous. I love this red outline that you have um, around the image. And uh, it's like a double outline. It's beautiful. And then just cosmic funk in this icy blue at the bottom is really cool. So this is a lovely mock-up. Let's keep going. So here's the front panel. Yay, I'm so happy to see the crop marks and registration marks. Looks really good. 
I can see that you have um, a spine here. It's getting kind of cut off there um, from this bleed, but that's okay. So I'm happy. Oh, and we see it here. Perfect. Perfect. Nice use of that red. Really pretty. Uh, I would like to recommend you also put in the name of the uh, the record company. So you may need to move Astro Groove up. And then here's the back of the album. Really pretty. Really nice. Just super clean. You know, it's really beautiful. I love these fonts. Really nice. This font is really cool. It's like a futuristic um, font. It's really neat. So you do not need this on both sides. So I think it works really nicely on the back. I noticed um, jumping ahead a bit, but on your CD cover or your single cover, I can't remember, um, you don't have it on the front. You just have Cosmic Funk, funk nice and big. And I think that that does the job perfectly. It doesn't, it's not too sparse by any means. Like the whole thing, the whole kind of theme of this album is this like big empty space, right? And so I think it's okay to not include these three lines of text on the front. They work beautifully back here, uh, but we do still need your record company logo and your barcode on the back. So luckily there's room to just nudge this up a bit and you can have your barcode in a corner, your record company in a corner, you know, decide whichever corner you'd like to um, add them in. And then they don't have to um, step into this space at all, you know. Great. I love it. Now this is your inside panels and there's, it's so fun. This is such a fun collage. Great. I love the guys in there. <laughs> I love it. And the reflection of the disco ball, really cool, really nice. This is like very funk reminiscent, you know, just these, um, these kind of collage you know, not perfectly digital Photoshop collages like we see now. Like I love these more, like they actually cut out pictures and stuck them to an image and then took a photo of that. And that became um, the inside design. And I see that nice red border around there again. It looks really pretty, really good. So much consistency. It's really nice. And then this is nice. So these are your lyrics here. Uh, is this the text that you use on the front? Yes, it just looks different because there's lowercase and stuff. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, this looks great. So the word lyrics, um, because we're opening this and this is going to be on the inside, lyrics can be over on this side, or you can have like side A lyrics, side B lyrics, um, or you can even place lyrics across the center. Now it will get folded, so um, it you know it might that's not always like the best. Uh, the best solution for putting something like in a fold. I mean, it's a gatefold album cover, so it will lay like flat once they open it, but it's not something I want to like, um, you know, encourage a lot of putting something right in the middle there, but uh, it is an option. So um, yeah, and then I see this right here. So this is the beginning. So this is like how this is supposed to start. So I would just nudge uh, you need to flip flop them. This needs to be over here on the left. This needs to be on the right panel. I think the other thing you could do is have um, this side one part just on the side one lyrics, and then you can move this side two part over here on the side two lyrics. Okay. Um, you could also do something with this, like place it along the bottom, uh, all in one horizontal row. Um, you know, if you wanted to, and you could even make it in the red font or something to just mix it up a little bit. Great. And then this looks really nice. I'm happy to see that you put side one and side two on there. I think it's really fun that um, this is right on the, the whole of the um, label. I think that's gonna look really cool. And this looks fantastic. These look great. You even have the times of the songs. Really cool. Uh, the only other thing is we need our record company label on record company uh, uh, logo on there. OK, so once you get that, you add it to the front or I'm sorry, the back cover. Be sure to add it to these labels as well. And so this isn't um, this isn't the trimmed version. So you'll want to trim it after this pink line here. Uh, you know, cut this part off of the pink line. OK. And then here's your mock-up. So you did a seven inch um, and it's beautiful. This is really nice. 
So seven inch record is gonna have a really large hole, like almost an inch in diameter right here in the middle. So it's gonna cut into this whole design and your logo and the name of the album. All right, so uh, you have you need to use this you need to use a seven inch label template. So just check that out. This is really cool with the disco ball going in there, and I love seeing this. This is really nice. I love Groovealicious. So this is beautiful. See how nice that looks without the text at the bottom. It works. It works really beautifully. I love the tracking here of how far out far spaced your uh, text is. It's it's really pretty. So beautiful job there. So same thing on this one though, we do need a barcode on the back and your record company logo. This is fun and perfect and we'll leave that how it is. And then same thing with these lyrics, your front first page of the lyrics needs to be over on the left side and your second page of the lyrics needs to be over on the right side for these ones. And then whatever changes you make to the 12 inch, make sure you make them here. So if you do decide to move the band members names to the bottom or whatever, um, or the side two to the side two part, you know, just do it here too. All right, great. And then, like I said, you're going to have a big hole in the middle, so you'll have to redesign a little bit. Be sure to add your record company logo here. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Next up is Twyla, and Twyla's genre is 60s psychedelic. So Twyla, I'm still struggling to see the 60s part of your psychedelic designs, but uh, because these are so heavily kind of chibi style or, you know, uh, like anime style drawings with these characters that are super, super cute and have these large, cute eyes. So I am just going to move forward as this is like a contemporary version of psychedelic. So it's not 60s psychedelic at all, but it's psychedelic influenced on your current uh in our current time okay so um this is your cover for your album cover and i see your bleed marks and your whole um template all the template lines and stuff so when you're working with a template like this make sure that you pull your um, backgrounds all the way to these uh blue tr um, bleed lines okay so even on these flaps here the dye line right um so just pull that pink all the way up there and over here too, because they do get printed. And then when the machine folds it over and glues it all together, uh, it's not always perfect. So you want to make sure that you don't have any white space. So then I also noticed that your uh, crop line is going to cut off uh, almost a quarter of your text. Same with up here, maybe a fifth or so. Um, and it'll also cut into your Columbia Records logo. So make sure that you at least get this logo out of here. If this is intentional, then that's totally fine with me. Oops, sorry. Oh, there we go. So here's your side A and side B. Um, this is a really neat design. So this does feel, um, the way you, that you warped the text feels uh, very psychedelic. 60s psychedelic, woohoo! Um, and then this background I can see is a bit Art Nouveau inspired. It's getting there. She still has these large, um, like anime eyes. She's cute. Like they're so, your illustrating is fantastic. Please don't get me wrong. Um, they're really adorable characters and you're a great illustrator. Uh, so the only thing that are, the things that are missing from these record labels are we need the album name, the band name, and the album, the record company logo as well. But I'm happy to see side A and all of your awesome song titles listed and especially in this really fun warped text, it looks great. The white looks great on top of those bright colors too. The color palette's very fun. All right, and then so on this mock-up, it's showing me that this text is not being cropped. See that? And it also shows me a white line above the top. I'm not sure if maybe the mock-up just didn't, you know, the, the overlay just didn't stretch all the way to the edges, but just check on that, okay? And then this is actually a, um, a seven inch record label. And so we're doing the 12 inch record label. Unless this is the seven inch. Let me just look, <laughs> we'll keep going. Oh yeah, it says it is the seven inch. Great, okay, good. Yes, I'm sorry, this is the seven inch. 
then it's perfect. <laughs> All right. And then um, this is really fun. I like this about the band section. You did some fun things with the um, uh, the alignment of the text. And I think that's really great. This is a fun place to play with that kind of stuff. So it works out, works out nicely. I think over here um, is a missed opportunity. I don't know if you uh, wanted to put in some lyrics or because we don't have any lyrics, right? Yeah, we're missing the lyric sheet. So you could do a smaller about the band section, uh, meaning this text is super large. Uh, so you have room to make it smaller. And then a seven inch, okay, hold on, let me back up. So a seven inch album is only going to have two songs on each side. So you would get rid of, you know, uh, eight of these songs. So then if you were to put your song lyrics, which is one of the requirements of the assignment on one, on these inside panels, um, you'd only need to lay out lyrics for four songs and you can use placeholder text like you did here. Great. All right, so this one is the 12 inch and this looks really nice. So your, um, so your bleeds, yeah, your trim marks are cutting into this text. Do you see that line there? And this Columbia logo is too close to that trim line. You need about a quarter of an inch uh, margin um, between the trim line and any logos or important text, um, unless it's you know intentionally butted up against the, the trim line. But we don't intentionally butt up the logos for the um, record companies. So, so then we also need a... Um, uh, a barcode on the back here. And usually your song list is on the back. Um, it doesn't always have to be though. And I'm happy to see this here, the um, band name and album cover on the spine. And we need the name of the record company. So you put Columbia Records down here too. So you may need to bump up um, uh, Mystified Animals a little bit to separate it from Columbia Records. But I love this, what you did here with this warped text. It's really fun, really cool. Yeah, so this shape here is making it feel a little more kind of mid-century modern. Just when we throw in ge geometric shapes, it is just, you know, real reminiscent of mid-century modern, which was in the 60s. Um, it's just that the rest is not feeling that. that. So um, I don't know. I don't think you need that there. But I think this is a good place to, um, this would be a good place to add about the band on that panel there. Unless you put your lyrics, let me see. Nope, here's your lyrics page. Okay, cool. Great, 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 great. Excellent, okay. <laughs> and then remember that this is gonna be um, upside down on this page. She is correct. Do you want her upside down? Let me flip back and see the back of your, yes. So she's supposed to be upside down. Yes, that looks good. Okay, so maybe this is supposed to be upside down too for this whole Alice in Wonderland and falling down the rabbit hole thing. So that would work. Okay, <laughs> great. So now these la these labels look correct uh, as far as their dimensions and the, um, yeah, that's perfect. Good job. Uh, so like I said, we, we add the uh, album name, band name, and record company logo to these record labels. This looks good. This is a better mock-up. So make sure that on your um, layout with the template that you nudge up this text off of that bleed uh, line and you nudge down the down the text off of that upper bleed line um, so that your trim mark isn't running across the top fifth and the bottom fifth of this text, okay? Great, and so um, this is, oh, what part is this? So I didn't see this on this design. This is your seven inch. I think this is part of the 12 inch, but I'm not seeing that on the other parts of the design there. So unless this is like an insert and it's part of these lyrics, maybe it's your, the slip. That's probably what it is. It's probably the slip cover for the record itself. Okay, we're cool. And then here's your lyrics page. And this is really a really fun layout too. Um, I like your left and right alignment. 
And I think that you could do something with the font color of your song lyrics. Let me just go back and take a look at this. Play with white for those song lyrics. Like I know you have some really light colored um, purples here, but I think the white might be stark enough that it'll still be readable. Uh, and just see if that'll work. All right, and great. One more thing. For the lyrics page, I like how this is um, italicized. So maybe italicize these words here uh, and make it look a little more like the front cover text. Oh, that'll be fun. All right, great, thanks Twyla. Next up is Abigail. Abigail's genre is 70s punk. And this turned out really beautifully. I love all these hand-drawn, hand-painted um, illustrations here. And this is a nice mock-up. It looks really good. Let's go ahead and look at the rest of it. Great, so this is your 12-inch record. I love this torn paper edges, very punk. Your logo turned out awesome. I love it, love it so much. It looks really good in all white too against this um, like rose pink background, it's beautiful. I like Pixie Studios too. That's a great logo and um, for your record company and how you treated uh, Feminot. The text that you used there is the fonts are just awesome. Like so good at collaging fonts, really great. Yes, I love, love, love. So I have a barcode on the back. We have your spine there that's uh, flip the script and Feminot there that looks good. And the cover looks fantastic. Um, yeah, this is really neat. It, what I like about your this style, this like watercolor style, is that it's soft um, and feminine, but then it's this like punk girl who's smoking and she's like, you know, wearing all these punky clothes and um, she's got a Band-Aid on her legs, so she's like not feminine. Uh, but it's cool because it feels collaged as well, which is really, you know, um, really punk rock like using these collaging kind of elements plus the red edges it looks fantastic really really beautiful and i love the pinks like this this like wash of pink is just really neat really cool it adds so much texture it's gorgeous these different um tones and shades of pink is lovely so then uh what we're missing on the back is our record company label um, and then, so even if like they self-publish a record company, I'm sorry, even if they self-publish a record, they are still going to put like a label name on there. Like even if it's, you know, their own label they made. So just make sure you get that on there somewhere. It doesn't have to be prominent and humongous. And then you're also going to write the name of the record company on the spine. I think that you could play with some font colors on this side. Uh, whether it's turning this text to white or turning side A and side B to white, to either one. Um, I mean, if you turn side A and side B to white, that's where our eyes are gonna go. And I think the names of the songs are more important than the words side A and side B. Um, I also think that you can go a little smaller with the text for the names of the songs. But I do like this left and right alignment. Make sure on this side that your side B is aligned all the way to the right. It looks like there might be an extra space there, okay? And just double check, I think that this, all of this line spacing is correct. It just looks different because this is all caps and this has a descender. So this looks pretty close to that. Whereas this is all lowercase and there's no descenders above it. So it looks like there's a gap there. And then, I don't know, just go ahead and highlight all that text, put them all in the same paragraph and make sure all their uh, line spacing is the same. This looks the same to me on this side. Okay, uh, and that you don't have an extra space after that B. Because even though it's punk and it's supposed to seem self-made, it's also gonna go in your portfolio. So you wanna make sure that you pay attention, like that you demonstrate that you pay attention to details, right? All right, so now this is your inside panels. Looks great. This is fun. This little polka dot, it's little, little stars and shapes, really nice. I like these uh, tally marks too, it's great. And this is really wonderful. All this color is like, phew. it'll be a really fun surprise when they pu pull this uh, sheet out of their record, you know, and look at it. So for here, um, I do recommend making the names of the songs at least one point high, uh, bigger, um, and it, it bold them maybe. 
or make all the titles of the songs white, um, not or, and or make all the titles of the songs white. Uh, but I do think they need to be larger. And I, I mean, I see that they are currently larger than the text below. It just needs to be one or two points even larger. And then treat it a little in a different style. So just, just bolding it will answer that, will solve that. I mean, they are all capped, but um, you know, you can separate it even more just to show your capabilities of uh, visual hierarchy. And then I do see that these, there's some spaces that are a little bit bigger than other spaces. So I think they really need to be consistent. Um, so pick which, you know, amount of separation you want between each paragraph and just make it consistent. If the bottom is a little jagged, that's fine. Your text does not need to extend all the way to the bottom of each column. Okay, great. All right, and that's the trimmed version. And so I'm very happy to see these uh, correct trim lines and uh, registration marks. Fantastic, wonderful, great work there. This looks really good too. We have everything we need. Good job, looks great. And uh, then this is your seven inch single, I think. So this um, is not a seven inch record. This is a 12 inch record. And so your seven inch label is gonna be even larger with like maybe a bigger hole in the middle. Um, but I love this uh, awesome record, uh, I'm sorry, record cover design. <laughs> this looks great too. Awesome. So you may consider putting your four song titles on the back of the single. Uh, and you also need to have the record company label, record company uh, logo on the back. And then on here, we have nobody on one side or nobody on one side. Um, if you want, you can just have two songs on your single. That's fine. But put them on the back of the record. And then if you make a second label, let me just see if you did. Yeah, you just made one. So you would make a B-side label with a different song on there. Um, so, and I do recommend putting like side A, side B uh, on here. I guess you don't have to, but let me go back because I skipped some stuff. So yeah, so just make sure you have your record company logo and your song title, song, two songs, two tracks <laughs> listed on the back. I'm happy to see that spine that was there. And this looks good for your inside panel. This looks really great. Wow, you even have lyrics on there. Wonderful. Really good. Good. All right. Great. And then I already said the thing about the labels. All right. Great job. Thanks so much, Abby. And next up is Keon. Keon's genre is new wave, 80s new wave. And so let's look at your records. All right. This album was inspired by the 80s films, video games, and cartoons. Main genre being synth wave and electric, and there are no vocal lyrics on the tracks. Uh, they're all instrumental, so there's not going to be a lyric sheet. Great. Okay, so it's like Herbie Hancock and, um, you know, other people like that. I was trying to think of 80s guys that didn't have, like, lyrics to their songs. <laughs> there was uh, Art of Noise as well. So let's see. This looks beautiful. This background with the stars is so pretty, and I love these lines like computer screen lines or it's just like noise it's beautiful um this color palette is really lovely and um the logo looks great at the bottom there on the black and as well as the song title blue stars at the top there and then your song list on the back looks really nice so unfortunately we have to have the dumb barcode on the back so it's gonna it's gonna take away a bit from this beautifully clean design, but it's just a requirement. And as graphic designers, we have to learn how to incorporate the business side, like the, the actual requirements that um, you know go on things like this, right? So we have to include the record company logo, which I think that's what this little fox is here as well, but you need to put the record company's name on there. And then um, your barcode at the bottom. This looks really pretty. This is beautiful mock-ups, really nice. Great, so this is your inside and it looks beautiful. This is a really nice addition, addition here and this looks beautiful on this side. I love it, really nice mock-up, really clean. 
So on the outside mockups, we're not seeing your spine at all, and I don't see the spine here. So maybe it'll be on the trim one. We'll take a look at that when we get there. Great. So here's your um, records with the labels on there. For this um, mockup, if you do use it in a portfolio, make sure you punch a hole in that middle there like you have here, okay? That's easy enough to do. And now we have the, okay. So, hmm. so usually this is rotated, um, I'm going to say 90 degrees counterclockwise. And then this one would be rotated 90 degrees clockwise. But if you are intentionally having it turned, that's fine. We do need a spine here, though. The spine is missing. And that's just going to have your... Um, album cover name, your artist name, and the um, record company name down the side. So you could have this black just spill over into the spine and then have your names on it in the white or this nice blue that, that you like to use there. All right, and then this looks good. So you're going to take these six songs and you're going to stick them over onto this side, <laughs> okay? So you have side one and side two, and then you have your record company logo and you have your band name. So just make them look the same, um, record company logo, band name, and then your song list down here. There'll be room, too, once you move this over to make the songs a little bit larger. Uh, it'll be easier to read on both sides, okay? If you wanted to, I think we may have talked about this, putting really tiny copyright text around the edges. You can play with that, not in this white space. That's your bleed, and these backgrounds should extend to that um, edge of this part. Uh, you know, over the white, but um, yeah, if you want, you can add that. You don't have to. It's not a requirement. All right, so now here's the CD. Hold on. Is this the CD? No, that says vinyl album cover. Cool. Okay, so the CD is great as is. Um, you don't need, you know, to put these on the back or anything like that. Everything on one side is perfect. And then the CD cover looks really nice, and I like that you changed the uh, design for the cover, so that's really fun. You get to use both of those cities in there. This looks beautiful. This is a really nice mock-up, getting to see both of these. And the behind, the clear um, disc holder lets you see the design behind it, so that's really pretty. And then this is your fun insert. Cool, that's cool. I love it. Great, so this is the inside that I was just talking about. Looks good, looks really good. So you don't need this on the inside. Uh, and then this is, the back, this will be the back. So on the back, you'll need, I was just trying to figure out which panel is the back. And it would, it would be this one. So you would need a barcode on here and your record company logo on here. So you may need to move your um, band logo somewhere, but that's okay. And I think leaving this blank is fine. Great. So I see you have tiny trim marks and, um, registration marks, but they're not the right scale and they uh, don't show you extending your design to the bleed line. So this is really important. Like this is crucial information that you need to know before you graduate, that you have to extend backgrounds to the bleed line beyond the trim line. And so if you laid this out in Photoshop, that's not where you're gonna be laying stuff out. If you're comfortable in Photoshop, that's great but you've got to get comfortable in InDesign and Illustrator. So if you lay this all out in Photoshop, that's fine. Just pull it over into Illustrator. And then from there, stretch it past beyond your artboard to your bleed lines that you set up when you set up your new document, and then export that um, using the uh, PDF presets that I go over in the demonstration. That's totally okay. So you, if you like, only want to work in Photoshop, that's one thing, because I know that there's things that you can't do in Illustrator that you can do in Photoshop. Um, you might see a little bit of degradation in your text going, if you make your text in Photoshop and bring it into Illustrator. So what I do is I would do all of these effects, all your background stuff in Photoshop, and then bring that background as a, uh, I'd place it into Illustrator onto my artboard with the bleed lines and extend it to the bleed lines. And then I'd add my, I'd build my logo in Illustrator, place it on top of that image in Illustrator and place this logo also um, 
in Illustrator and then from there send it out so that these logos will still be crispy and you know not pixelated at all but I still get all these awesome Photoshop uh, effects um, that I made in Photoshop okay or you can do a lot of that in InDesign as well so either way InDesign you didn't really need to use in this one because you don't have a ton of text like this is a good chunk of text but as long as it is um, as long as it's you know proofread and flawless in a word processing doc before you bring it over into Illustrator and you don't uh, adjust anything uh, type wise like you don't change any of the words in Illustrator then you can totally do it in Illustrator unless the printing company specifies that they only accept InDesign files. Okay. All right. Great job, Keon. So thank you so much, everybody. This was a lot of work and you did it. And I cannot wait to see your t-shirts in the next assignment. So um, yeah, thanks for watching.